This video contains information that may be offensive and disturbing to some people. If you are a viewer and are triggered or shocked by images and need a warning prior to every clip or story being discussed, then please unsubscribe from my channel immediately. My channel covers the harsh reality of even the worst crimes imaginable and is for adults only. For those of you who fit into this category, take this message as your warning and don't watch any further. How's it going? Yep, still sitting here wearing this stupid thing. I keep thinking every day when I get up it'll have healed a little bit overnight. And most of the times it did and then today it felt worse. So, who the hell, it's so touchy, you know. But anyways, uh, I've got surgery coming up in 10 days so hopefully that'll make a difference. Um, Try to find something. Look at look at this crazy shit right here. You know, in the of course it's in in uh, where the hell was this? Virginia. Yeah, Virginia. I don't know what their politics are there. I can't, because I can't put the headphones on my head all the way, I can't tell how loud it is or anything like that. Uh, we got another Trolls coming in again? Yeah. No thanks. Not covering that one. No name. I see another, you know, one of those new YouTuber clowns covering that one. Hey, look, right here it says, uh, Virginia rape suspect allegedly killed his accuser after being released from jail due to the coronavirus. <laughs> okay. A man charged with rape is now accused of murdering his accuser after he was released from prison over coronavirus concerns. Ibrahim E. Buachi, or whatever his name, was indicted last year on charges that included rape, sodomy, strangulation, and abduction, and was jailed without bond in Alexandria, Virginia. He had, and Alexander, Virginia is very uh, lefty. He had been accused of rape by Carla Dominguez last October, and she testified about the crime in December. But in April, this idiot, uh, his lawyer, argued the novel coronavirus put him at, and other inmates in danger, and a circuit court judge allowed for his release on $24,000 bond, which means $2,400. So it went from no bond to just 2400 basically. And on the condition he stay confined to his Maryland home except for meeting with his lawyers or trial officials. Okay, well anyways, I think they should put the, the judge in prison and uh, let him sit uh, in a cell with other rapists. Okay, and this is exactly what I'm talking about, everybody. What it should be is, is the judge has to let him live at his house for a month or two. Then he can be in house arrest. And it's amazing how many of those judges would change their mind. Okay, but this is a ridiculous example of these idiots. Now, people, 
who you might consider releasing during the coronavirus would be people on, you know, uh, minor drug dealers or some shit like that, right? They're not, I mean, people are choose, choose to do drugs, okay? Yes, people die and all that kind of stuff, but I wouldn't consider a somebody um, on the street selling pot a violent, per, uh, violent offender, okay? Those people, maybe, okay? But a rapist, you let that guy go? Are you kidding me? <laughs> I mean, you are an idiot. And I hope, I don't know, man. I don't know what kind of repercussions there are, but something should be done to that idiot judge. I mean, what a, what a pile of shit, you know? And then, and then what happened was, is he drove away. Police were after him. He crashed his car and then he shot himself in the head, but he survived. May your surgery go well. Thanks, Foxy Bot, and thanks, Michelle Nicholas, earlier. Yeah, it's just, it's just disgusting. Uh, let's see. He broke those rules in May when he, when he was found at a Wendy's drive-thru in his hometown, so he wasn't staying at home. Police said he acted strangely and rammed a cop car with his own vehicle leading to various assault and traffic charges. But cops in Maryland, this is in Maryland, were unaware of the pending rape case in Virginia and released it. See, another ridiculous. How come there isn't a system that is nationwide? We have the fastest damn computers in the world. How does Google work? You know, you type in a phrase in Google and it finds it out of a trillion, trillions of pages or whatever. And you got a guy, you can't type in his name, and all of the police forces are connected to something. I mean, hire Google to make a law enforcement version of Google that's only for criminal stuff. Okay? I mean, <laughs> yeah. Just, it's insanity. Is what it is. Police say... Uh, Buechi returned to Alexandria. That's what happens when there's too many bleeding Thanks, heart liberals. <laughs> yeah, the bleeding heart types. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, police say Buechi returned to Alexandria on July 29th and fatally shot Dominguez outside her apartment, the Post reported. Cops found very little information about Dominguez other than that she was from Venezuela and had no family living in the United States. I mean, what a what a nightmare. Oh. Anyways, there you go, everybody. That's what you get when people make absolutely moronic decisions, and I think there should be consequences for judges and attorneys like that who fight so hard to get their person out of jail, even though they know that they're a rapist. Okay? Uh, you try to get them out. Well, the attorney, I, I wouldn't judge the attorney. Okay? That's, that's their job. The judge, though, is somebody who makes decisions for society. And what a moron. Hey, hey, no name, idiot. I'm covering something else right now. Okay, maybe, maybe some other day. Who knows, okay? I'm not going to be covering it, though, at this point. I don't know anything about it. Um... I just saw one of the classic, uh, you know, newbie YouTubers that picks a case and covers it over and over and over again, covering it, and that's that's a point where I go, well, forget it, I'm not covering. It. Yeah, well, the rapist should be, you know, whatever you want to do with the rapist. I'm talking about this judge who let the rapist out, and the rapist went and killed his accuser. Okay. What a, the judge should at least, at the very least, be disbarred for making that decision. Okay, very least. And I wouldn't be, I wouldn't mind at all if he had to go in and serve time in prison. Okay, because any time that you let these people out and they commit another crime, you're, you are at fault. <laughs> it's just... What do you mean he retired a day later? It just happened.
Thanks, Bitsy Boo. You don't have to block that guy, though. Let me, uh, yeah, just, I don't know who this person is. I'm sure they're just trolling. Let's see if they make another trolling comment. If they make another trolling comment, Kit Kat, uh, get, get them out of here, okay? Right. So he just retired today, then? Because it just happened. Inboard at work. Hope you have a speedy recovery. Okay, so uh, what we're going to talk about right now is um, uh, Cassie Lynn. Remember the, the girl that's in here? She sent me some, I think she sent me some links. Uh, somebody else emailed me some links, or Cass Lynn as she's called here. She sent me some links, and, uh, and then somebody emailed me the same links showing an aerial shot and then I was able to find the location on a map of where the possible bones of Crystal Rogers were found. I think it's likely they were hers because the FBI got involved right after they found these bones, okay? So there must have been something in the grave like perhaps clothing that matched exactly what she was wearing and they knew it was her. <laughs> got another troll look at these stupid names that they're using remember the one who knows that's probably who this guy is right so the location's right here but look how close it was to where my guess was it was really only about I think maybe a half mile at the most let's see so I left that there yeah 0 0.51 and it's actually it's really bizarre you guys you're going to freak out when you see this shit so the body was found on the side of a bank so like let's say you're in the water you know those bank the bank that goes up the side there was a hole there and let me show you that picture really quick here so this is one of the original photos taken before the FBI or any oh God, it's doing that slow crap again I'm not sure what's going on with this but let me move this out of the way and as soon as it loads up or unloads or whatever the hell let me try it again it up with uh, something else so this is a photograph when people took that were just they saw this strange like a bone and some other things and this is before the FBI even got a look at it man this is just everything's slow here can you guys see that so look at that. That's the side of a bank, right? And I think that might be a bone right there, maybe a femur or something sticking out. It's hard to tell. And then look, there was stones on top of it and different things inside the side of a bank. Okay? So now let's play some of these. Uh, Cairo went out there. He was there today. I gave him the GPS coordinates when I found the location. And then he, this is his footage that you're seeing on the screen right now. And there's also other drone footage that got in a little bit closer, but uh, at least he got out there and flew the drone. And hold on a second.
All right, so this this bank, it's right there. You'll see it. You can barely make out a little dark area. It's really weird because what I think happened here was that, see that little, can you guys see right now this dry spot on top right of the bank, even though it's kind of small? Let me zoom in on that. All right, see that area right there? See how it's different than the rest of the bank right there? Hey, thanks, Chrissy Paradis. <laughs> That's right. Okay, see how it's right there, how it's a little bit, it's different. So I, here's what I think happened here. I think that whatever body, whosever body this is, perhaps crystals, was buried up here. And apparently the, the bank has been eroded over those five years. Okay, so what happened was they, it was buried near the edge of the water for some reason. And then as the water, if you look at from above, let me get back out of that again. See how the water goes around like this? So when it's moving quickly, it's going to erode going in this direction like that. Does that make any sense? Just a farmer did. The guy that owns the property. Not sure if I missed any Kit Kat donation. Wave woman surfing Cairo flew the drone and I ride there. Yep, wave. No, no wave tonight. No wave yet. <laughs> so I think that they dug the hole, the bodies were buried, and then it eroded, and then and then at that point it um opened up this little bit of an area here okay it wasn't like they dug a hole on the side of a bank and then tucked her in there or or whoever it is we don't even know yet that that's crystal okay but i it seems likely i mean what an absolute miracle though if this is her it's a complete miracle that she was found okay so let me keep playing some of uh this is cairo's footage right here And then I'll show you we're in relationship of... <laughs> Thanks, Kit Kat. So Cairo had to stand... Uh, he was about uh, 300 yards away, and I gave him the GPS coordinates, and I think he could just see it on a map and flew out over... I gave him a picture from above, and then... It, and I said there's like a little meadow there. I heard there was a possible wave woman surfing. Okay, so right there you could see it pretty good. There's another video that gets right in on it. Somebody else did. Another drone shot. So this is him from the road taking off. So right below him is this, that bridge. And then I think the meadow that he flies to is right over here. <laughs> Thanks, Sarah Brown and Shogun Love. Yep, Cairo, the roving reporter out there using a Mavic Mini. So I think whoever put the body there came in from this direction, from you know, away from the camera, like way over here somewhere. And then getting on that came wave. In. If I'm just playing you guys the footage you gave me. So that's what it looks like from kinda of high up, right? It didn't take me long to Cairo's find it, it was right near fund her. And payback from last month. Yeah, there's a, there's some other drone footage that was in a, on a website that gets right in there. It's really crazy looking. I mean, it flies right in, almost into the hole. They probably had permission to be there or something. I wonder if you could just ask to get on there.
Sherlock Hemlock. Thank you, Thank Bray you. and Carolina Cairo T. Wave. Lori Staggs. Christina Kubacek. Bitsy Boo. Shogun Love. Sarah Brown. No, you're not. You're not muted. No name, but we we're talking about a different case. Hats so if you bring up the other again case again, I'm going to block you. Scene video. Permanent, okay? Because you seem like a troll now. You're just asking questions like a little baby. And I'm, I'm doing something else. If you notice, right? Okay, great. <laughs> LOL, LOL. One more of those, and you're gone. Thanks, Cairo. Yeah, I showed him how to do the uh, the drone when he came over here one time. Pretty easy to fly. Thanks, Chrissy Paradis and Cairo. Here, let me see this one. Be cool to go up like about 400 feet. For Gray teaching me how to fly a drone and always having the spot on coordinates. Yeah, it's right there. Okay, uh, let's, let me go to the, the other drone footage. So this guy, I don't know what they were able to get right in there on this drone footage right here. Wave. Hey, thanks, Mysterious Monkey, Sapphire, and Tracy. Cairo and Chrissy Parody. So you can see this is the same location here. So glad to be back on Alive with Bray and all the gang. Thumbs up, light skin tone, thumbs up, light skin tone, thumbs up, light skin tone, tone throwing kisses. Now my supporters are just fine, no name. What it is is you're the one that's weird. Okay, you come in here and you keep telling, can Gray cover this case? 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 And we've already talked about it a hundred times. Well, anyways, look at this. Oh, we haven't talked about that case. I've already told you I'm talking about something else. Okay, and I'll pick the cases Riding that the I want wave, to wave. do. So look at right here. Look at that hole here. Isn't that crazy? So let me go back a little bit here, right? There. See, doesn't this make total sense to you guys what my theory is? See how that's like four feet deep, three to four feet deep right there from the surface? So they dig a hole, bury the body, and the body's actually this deep. So it may, maybe even five, four, and I don't know, I, I can't tell for sure, but like five feet deep. And they didn't realize that the, yeah, you're quite, you have a, quite a bit of drama there. No name. Lots of drama. So they bury the body and My then the, last drone the ended creek. up in a tree. Tears of joy, woozy face. <laughs> Thank you, CZ, CZ and Zozo and one sly angel. Yeah, so they dig the grave, bury the body, and maybe it's like three feet away from the edge of the creek, and they don't really they're not thinking about it. Kind of a stupid place. But. Surfing the G. And then over time the, the creek erodes the bank, exposing this right here okay so then they excavated it sort of sideways probably um, maybe they did it from the top too maybe that's why it looks like that I don't know but when you look at it it looks like drone wave that they didn't they didn't dig from the top that they went in from the side and I'm wondering uh, maybe they did it that way to to preserve as well as they could I mean I'd like to see what they were doing It's, it's pretty crazy, though, isn't it? I think it's this side. Yeah, so I'm gonna, I'll put the link in the description of where you can watch this drone footage. This second. I gotta remove. I'll put it with the links from yesterday. I'll put it at the very top, so it's right there. Yeah. 
Yeah. So there you go. I mean, isn't that weird? Just look at that. Look what that is. Where that is right there. And and you can see, see these bushes and so forth in the water there. Well, look at this. If you go to Google Earth, uh, let's see. Google Earth is I think. We'll just go to. I think it's 2014. So this is about a year, two years prior to her going missing. And if you look down there. There isn't any bushes in the water. That that tree is still alive, and eventually it gets eroded and eroded and eroded, and then that falls into the water, and that's what you're seeing right there. See? But you can definitely see that one on Google Earth. That's right here, the bigger one. Mike check, 10987654321. Mike check. It's not, I can still hear myself. What does like cheese come before or after? Happening right now in Bardstown, the FBI is towing away Crystal Rogers' car for further investigation. The latest in her disappearance case coming up. Oh, you guys can't hear me. I've been talking for 20 minutes. <laughs> I've been talking this whole time. Oh, God. 
You know, my brother, I don't even know. Did you guys, did I ever turn it back on after my brother called? <laughs> Jesus. That's incredible. Well, at least you could hear some of that stuff. <laughs> that was funny as hell. Oh, my God. Okay, so what I'm saying is, what I was saying for part of it was, wouldn't it be interesting if they could link back these items in here to the construction business of the Hawks? You know, like, these seem like they're man-made objects. They were into construction, right? And you don't see any of those items sitting around anymore. They took them all out. So you sort of wonder if like they can relate these items right here to the house somehow. I think that'd be pretty awesome. And I also was given an image by, I don't know if she wants me to say her name, but um, see this is an image here prior to the FBI getting out there. Okay, it's the same location and everything. And, and they're, they just saw it there. So that means right up in this area up here is the location. And, uh, you know, the FBI wasn't even out there yet. I'd love to see more images of it pri prior to the FBI getting there. Let's see. Yeah. Go for it, Richard. I'm sure it'll be really interesting. <whistles> Let's see. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah, so I don't know. I was thinking maybe if you guys want to call in, there must be people watching that are from the area, right? And maybe you can call in and tell me what your theories are. Do you guys be interested in doing that? So here we go. I'm going to get it set up right here. I'll do it with the nurse's slideshow going. So there's the phone number right there. Yeah, I want people to call in and say what they're thinking. I mean, it's pretty bizarre, don't you think? I guarantee it, somebody didn't dig a hole sideways and put the body in there I, I I'm almost positive I mean I don't I'm not I don't know for sure but that it actually came down from above and they just excavated it sideways but it's a little bit weird though that they didn't excavate from the top as well because sometimes there could be items that were left in the soil above so I guess it's technically possible the body was buried through sideways I just don't think so And they just sort of tucked her in. But, but then if you notice, there's all the little bricks and things that seem to be on top of her, almost similar to the, uh, the Daybell case, right? Similar to that. <laughs> okay. We had another a troll there. I just thought I'd get rid of. Well, I'm, I'm pretty sure she's been there the entire time. Uh, what I was going to also show is the uh, from above, right? So look at this. this. They lived right here. I mean, this is the farm. They didn't live here. This is the the family farm. And it was just, I think, 200 and something acres. And so if you look, I mean, there's probably ways to have driven there. 
right? From that direction. See, there's these little paths and so forth that go all the way around. And they might have looked to check. If you look how crazy this is, look how weird this is. It's right in another county. So right here, they would have been in their own county. But then they realize, okay, that little tiny island thing right there is in another county. So we'll just, you know, so it's not... Oh, you can't see it? Oh, shit, man, I'm struggling tonight with this stuff. My brain's not... Uh, it's not functioning. <laughs> look at, look at, look at, look at, look at. Okay, let's look at it again. I got it. <laughs> Shit. Uh, I'm just more focusing on not hurting. So here's the, the where they live, the farm here, right? And it's just right over here. I think it's like not even five miles. Hey, look, I got ten dollars for you guys not being able to see. I should do that more often. Now, it's only four miles as the crow flies, right? Yeah, I'll put the number on this one, too. So they, they, they could have just figured out a way to drive through on different paths and whatnot to get to where... They buried her, and, and and it's all land, right? Look at this, all land, all the way up through here, and then you get to here. Well, that's where I originally thought it was, but it's right here. It's only a half mile from my original pin that I put there. And then look at this, how it's, that's another county right there. That little tiny, where that creek is, and there's that little meadow. That's in another county. So they took the effort, okay, where's where's the next county? And they just put her right on the other side, right in that little sort of loop. Don't you think that's a little strange? I think they use their cool four-wheelers like they do, like they you hear them talking about all the time, and drove there. That's what I was saying earlier. All right, uh, let's see. Somebody just called in. I saw that. I think. Okay, here we go. Two six two six nine. You're on the air. Hey, how's it going? I missed, going pretty good. I missed the beginning of the show, and I just want. I do have a theory. Well, who's this? This is uh, Sapphire in the chat. Oh, Sapphire. Okay. Yeah. How's um, it going? <laughs> I was wondering, actually, what, how, since it's been so long, how do you think? they would tie anything back to them. I heard you say about the materials that were stuck in mm. with her, and I thought that was great. But since it's been so long, and does he have a lawyer? Like, is he talking to the police? Do you know? Um, well, I, I know that they kind of gathered him up. The FBI did. Uh, Nick, anyways. I don't know. I don't know. But, you know, we don't know what the FBI is going to come up with. All I know is um, they found a body within four miles and very close to the proximity, you know, of the farm. And the FBI immediately got involved once the they looked at and got the body. So there must have been something inside the you hole. You adorable Gray, doing your uh, best despite <laughs> fighting bad pain. Inside the effects. hole, they knew. Um, Thank you, Purple Heart. Yeah, no problem, Sherlock Emma. So there was, you know, they knew that. Something in the hole, they could probably determine almost immediately was crystals. You know, if 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 it is her, you know, but that's what it feels like. I mean, why would the FBI, if it wasn't her, why did they immediately take over the case, like within a couple days after the body was excavated? So has her her boyfriend have the, has the FBI questioned the person of interest, the boyfriend? Mm, I don't know. I mean, I'm sure they're doing whatever they're supposed to be doing. Did you watch the last right. two shows where they, you know, the interrogations of both of them? Right. I was in and out on those, but I wasn't sure if that was what's going on now or if that was... That was five um, That was yeah. way back yeah. then. That was like four years ago. Right. Okay. Well, I appreciate it, but, I'll be listening. Yeah, but I don't really have any answers, like, exactly, uh, you know, what the FBI is doing. They're probably, you know, we're always frustrated with police never telling us what they're doing. The FBI is even 
more notorious right. for that. We're not going to know mm. a damn thing that, other than the fact they're driving around with the big FBI letters on their jackets. And then people go, oh, look, they're over here. They're over there. So they always know where they're at. But what they found or what they're That's doing, we don't know. know. <laughs> right? All right. Well, I'll be looking for an update from you. Thanks so much, Craig. Yeah, thank you. Thanks for calling in. Have a good night. Bye. Bye. Right. <laughs> Yeah, so let's see. What do we got here? Let's just try to look at how this would work. So if they own a bunch of acres, I don't know how far up they own it. You know, maybe this whole area, like, I don't know, they can't own all that. But like right in here, something like that. And then, I mean, this is just total guessing here. But there's another county right there. And then look at that. You know, they probably had a map on them and they just kind of drove on different paths on their four wheelers. They've been living, they've lived there all their whole lives, you know. They know the area. They're driving around. Probably have a GPS deal going. I mean, look at this. You could just go anywhere right here. As soon as they got here, they could probably drive down here like this. And then around, like maybe through the woods like this, and then boom, maybe here. I don't know if maybe they went into this field first, but it just seems like it's not difficult to get around with a uh, with uh, four wheelers out there. You know, maybe they had something where they were one of those things you can tow. They put some stuff in there, driving around. Nobody's going to think of it. You know, maybe it looks like they're towing wood around or something like that. Yes, so call in. Thanks, Madonna. Sherlock Hemlock, Zozo, Chrissy Paradis. <laughs> and Allison R. Telling me I can't see. Yeah, he might have said something like that. He said that they do they go fishing. I remember him mentioning fishing. Times a week since he can remember that. Three to four times a week. Yeah. Well, they were there that night though. That's the thing. You know, that very night. They were there, and then they met again after the interrogation. Do they have a what? Well, nobody's calling in. I guess this will be a shorter type show. Let me play this one video here, hold on. So this is WHAS11.com. In the investigation that has Bardstown talking and interest statewide. After a day of searching by a huge team of federal and state police, no arrests tonight in the five year long disappearance of Crystal Rogers, one of Bardstown's biggest unsolved mysteries. The night team's Jesse Cohen was there as the FBI worked late at one of three locations. The homes of Nick Houck, Brooks Houck, and the Houck family farm all searched in the hunt for more evidence. Nine search warrants have been served by the FBI today who are now the lead investigators in the disappearance okay, get that call of Crystal right Rogers. After One of those was to Nick Huck's house right behind me here Huck. in Bardstown, where they spent more than 13 hours digging through his property. 
Rummaging through his car and digging through the house. That's the last action we saw from the FBI at the house of former Bardstown police officer Nick Houck just a few hours ago. We're sleeping bed, my husband heard yeah. a big boom. Ashley Mudd tell. lives just Joe, a few doors down from Nick, and her husband heard the noise early this morning. I knew exactly what they were doing, where they were at, and been waiting for it. We never saw Nick go back inside his house when the FBI was done for today, but just a few miles away. His brother Brooks, named the chief suspect in the case, hopped on his mower to mow his front lawn just as the FBI wow, left. This, really this was a very different image than hours before when the commotion began. From guns to file cabinets and stacks of documents, they spent hours taking things from the two properties. They're, they're going through everything. While dozens of other members of the response team were at the Hauk family farm, which is just a few miles away from where human remains were found less than two weeks ago. You never expect it to be hit home, but sometimes it does. A property owner whose land is just feet away from where they were discovered took us to the spot. That hole in the embankment of the creek is where they found the unidentified human remains. But he says if it weren't for Mother Nature, they may have never been found. Where we're standing right now on June 29th was probably 12 feet of water. He says record rainfall over the last three years has eroded this area 10 or 12 feet. Yeah, now see? knowing someone has been buried That's here, what I was saying. it's they close probably, to home. It would be nice to know what happened. They probably just, buried the bodies in regular soil, but it was too close to the bank. They just didn't think about it, 12 feet away. And it eroded right to the edge of the grave, and now you can see what was in it. That's just an absolute miracle. Just to know and just have closure, especially for the family, who's ever family. Because it's almost like the next rainy season, it would have washed in there and took away the bones. So it was like this perfect timing, miracle stuff. It is. That would be the main thing. No, it's just a peaceful little community. To be clear, those yeah, human well, remains that we were, were saying, found have not been maybe, identified. Maybe. And there is no timeline. Yeah, somebody said she was shot. Well, but we people don't know. In the community that, that we spoke with right? today say they, that's why they took the guns. like those at Nick's house here. I mean, here's the thing is the reason they would have confiscated the guns is because they may have, perhaps they found some evidence with the body they found that it was shot. And maybe there was even shells there. Maybe, you know, I, I, I think she was dead. Or, you know, if it's her, okay, we keep saying it's her. But if it was her, which same, seems likely since the FBI got involved so quickly, if it, if it is her, she was probably killed elsewhere and moved there. Because it's too remote for somebody to be getting a ride from some, you know, it's just alive and that kind of thing. It just, it'd be really strange if she was shot and killed while in the grave there okay but i can see that let's just say she was shot in the head or something and the bullet didn't exit then she's put into the grave never to be seen again except mother nature exposed the grave from the side buried from the top exposed from the side um they go in there they find a skull that has a bullet hole in it and in the grave they also find the bullet itself and now they're looking for weapons that match that. And they're also checking the ponds to see if uh, the gun was thrown in there. You know, in case it doesn't match one of the guns that they actually collected. Something like that. Okay, hold on a second. All right, 919, you're on the air. Hello, hello. Oh, Gray, it's Chrissy Paradis. Chrissy Paradis. All right. How's Look it going? Look at you whipping out the radio voice just for me. <laughs> that's right. Oh, that sounded bad. God, I can't come on here and not say something that sounds weird. No, anyway, that sounded okay. <laughs> um, so my, my mind was going back to um, the, uh, the grandmother of the house, uh, the white... I think, like, Whiteside was her mm -hmm. last name. I don't yep. know. Um, and the vehicle. And how she, you know, said that she would talk to them behind, the, behind closed doors and everything. And how cocky, um, I don't know, how cocky the brothers have seemed throughout this whole entire thing. That, um, I, but I couldn't really shake the idea of 
there had to be something that linked the grant for them to be as, you know, go down that road as far as they did with the grandmother's vehicle and the timeline. Um, it, it made me just really think, wow, these guys are methodical, but they're human. Um, and they obviously have not covered their bases. Same with the call, like the 911 call. Um, like, I mean, 911 call, the call when he was uh, getting interrogated and the brother calling. It's like, okay, that wasn't slick. I don't know if you intended it to be, but um, I feel like this, again, I think I said something similar at first, but it could be just natural erosion. I'm not like a scientist in case she couldn't tell. Um, natural erosion. Stuff, yeah, it was. Yeah. But it feels very specific and like they have plenty of enemies in the, in the area, plenty of people on What do you what do you mean it seems pretty specific? So what do you mean what do you mean by what do you mean by it seems pretty specific? Oh, I'm just saying it seems like there are pe a lot of people that aren't fans of the Howe family. Um, they seem right. to be very, you know, I mean, one was a police officer. Yeah, and one well, was I th there was just, the property the owner was just around there or something. He, you know, I don't remember what it was. Somebody looking for yeah. arrowheads or something. I think that's what I was told. Yeah, no. They found found it I there, know. and it was natural. It was natural erosion. It wasn't some intentional. Yeah, hey, I, you know. I, I just wonder if there, I'm thinking that there has to be a lot of people that have heard things, though, that would just help the case over time. Um or, I mean, there ha wouldn't there be circumstantial, and and I don't, I mean, I don't know what would be considered hearsay or not, um, but I just, I feel like there is enough to, like, take this case, regardless of if they can determine a mm. cause um, of death they did, like, in tossing the house, it just feels yeah. to me like, well, they have a bunch I don't want to count yeah. my chickens before they hatch, you know, or like, eggs before Like they, they have the hatch. surveillance cameras. You know, filming them, following each other at different times. They got stuff like that. You know, there might be a whole bunch more that they have that we that they haven't really publicized. That seems suspicious. And what does the child remember? Well, the child Did child was that? only like two, so I don't know if it remembers much. It wouldn't be I, trustworthy. I just didn't know at this age if you know maybe. I mean, there are people that believe in like um, the same stuff you do. You know, like the the EFT and I'm just kidding. Um, but no, there are like different <laughs> therapies, right? Or e to EVP. To see if there's any recall. Yeah. Oh, exactly. ESP. What I call it. Well, no, that was something different. EVP, yeah, EVP is just the little stupid app. You mean like uh, doing ATM? hypnosis or something? I, you know, I don't really know. Yeah. I don't think you can. Uh, listen, I don't think a two-year-old's recollection is would hold up in court by anybody. I think it, it's okay. a good stuff for yeah. a lead. It's like a hell, it might help you with a lead, like oh, bad man had hat with black, you know, something like that. But I just don't think it would be that. It's not that strong. And I'm, I'm just curious if you think that it was something like that um, was. Completely decide. I know that you had talked about, you know, just the ego, and she was, you know, leave. She had kind of talked about leaving and all that. But, um, but do you think that it was predetermined? Like, how far out in advance do you think the planning was? And I'm just, I'm curious about. Well, it sounds like the relationship sort of right. got. That, well, it sounded like the relationship was starting to go south, and it could be that Crystal knew some things about Brooke, Brooks and Nick that had she stayed with Brooke, they'd feel okay with her still being alive. But if she was going to be leaving, so maybe it has nothing to do with the you know child support or anything like that. And it could be that right. with her leaving... Then they were really nervous who she might tell 
what she knew. And then maybe that same information is related to Ellis here and why he was taken out prior. Yeah, I don't know. That feels very not that feels very close to I mean, it did seem like just wanting to have some you know, one hand in the police like jurisdiction and one in you know, like in the neighboring counties with each brother and um, at the the area in which um, and the nature in which Ellis was taken out, um, it just felt like they had some unsavory business, to say the least. And I know that Tommy had, you know, said that he was everything that I have seen on this case. He was incredibly devoted, and if he was close to uncovering something in mm-hmm. that they didn't want dug up, I guess that would totally align as well. Um, that, as opposed to him being, you know, having hurt, being a hurt. Yeah. Bruise well, it could be like drugs. I don't want to pay. You know, let's just say it's drugs. Let's just say somehow there's some drugs yeah. going on. Okay. okay. Okay, I got somebody messaged me today. It said that you know they don't want their name. They said that they were at some kind of a facility a long time. You know, I don't know who this person is, so I can't really. I'm not even going to say what it was. But let's just say that there was drugs. Okay. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean Ellis, that's what he did for work. Yep. He may have gotten onto something. Maybe Crystal here mentioned something. I mean, I don't know if they knew each other or what, but you know, Crystal and then Tommy here probably through his just dogged research that he was doing, found out a whole bunch of stuff, and he had this, and they knew, and he was just really coming down on the the two brothers here all the time, you know? Um, And so, you know, there's three people uh, that are dead that were all familiar with both of these people, right? (laughs) So it's kind of strange. It, it, it is. It feels like, uh, I mean, they, and given there hasn't, I don't know if there have been any other big cases um, that are being linked to them, um, but they have, like, so they've, quote, way low, if you can even say that, over the past couple of years, but because they kind of have, they've had to. Um, I don't really think that, I mean, it's a, it's a small town. It's not for. I mean, I don't know. I really hope that they both get brought down. If this is, you know, and so like to speculate if they are in fact. I'm, I'm not. No, I'm not even going to be PC about it. I hope that they both get um, held accountable. And I appreciate all the work that you've done, not just you know the past couple of days, but just on this in general. So. Appreciate you. <laughs> All right, cool. Can yeah, I, I mean, get a tiny bubble from you, real quick, before? Tiny bubbles. Ah, <laughs> uh, <laughs> no, there it. it is. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank yeah. you, Gray. Yeah, uh, thanks. Yeah, I do. I think I have that. Isn't it an audio hearing? I think I just was just looking at what. Um, uh, who was that? Yeah, Castle Inn just said a minute ago. I think it's not a video. I don't have a video of the hearing, but I think I have the audio here of it. That um, this somehow has something to do with criminal investigation. Oh, it's so quiet. Oh, it's not even playing out of the right. Let's do that again. Was it not playing correctly? Yeah, it should be. Hmm, let's see. That time it was coming out of my right ear. Uh, 
although it may be related to. Well, why don't you just type in who it says she was talking to, Kathleen? She says, watch the court videos where Nick was fired. This is the administrative hearing. Is that what you're talking about? I don't have a video of it. But is this the, uh, is this what you're referring to? Y'all in here. I don't remember that. But, well, I mean, well, we, know, we know you wrote this when you arrived together and you left together. We know that. I don't know. I don't really want to just listen to an audio file for hours. I guess she took off. Just throws out a comment. You know, why not just say what you're saying? It's just like, it's just, it's so frustrating. I heard somebody, I heard somebody say that she was messaging with the officer. I don't know, just, just type it in. Is it, okay, how about this? Yes or no? Was it Ellis that she was tech, uh, friends with? One of them state her text messages. Okay. Okay, well then what, what officer was it? Why are people scared to type it in? Okay, so she didn't have text messages with Ellis. Who did she have text messages with? Okay, well if you all know the answer, then just type it in. Instead of playing 20 questions here. That's what we do here. We just get information and we put it together and we move forward. Yeah, but there's people who do know the answer to the question. In the chat here, they're just playing like some weird game again. <laughs> That's right, Apocalypse Fra. Watch this two-hour press conference so that you can know who it was. Okay, there you go. That's it right there. Officer Lynn Davis. Okay. Is that a female officer or, or a guy? Okay, if you can find it, that'd be great. Yeah, Timothy, we can see above. Did you see how somebody else typed it in? You didn't need to retype it. <laughs> Do you really? You guys are crazy. Well, thank you, Kathleen, for finally getting that out. Instead of having us watch a two-hour show to get the name. And there's Zozo, always copying. <laughs> oh, boy. Nah, that's not what that was about. That was just about wanting, you know. Um, so she was text messaging with another officer. And maybe, and apparently that was a friend of hers. And may, maybe Nick, uh, here, here's something that's kind of interesting. Right? Like, so let's say she's texting with another officer. And they're friends. And it's a guy, right? They're buddy, you know. Who knows if what else was going on there? They they claim nothing was going on, but let's say they were getting close, and then Nick finds out about it, and also so does you know so does Brooke, and then they realize wow, and she's not going to stay in that relationship with Brooks, so then they're getting really paranoid at that point. I mean, just think how paranoid they would be getting at that moment. Knowing that, wow, if she leaves, 
Well, just type it in the first time, Castleman. You don't need to say the whole thing about, hey, watch the whole, um, you know, firing hearing to get the name. Just type in, at the firing hearing, a person named Lynn, some, you know, Lynn Davis was the person she was texting. Now, then there's no more questions that need to be asked. It takes like one second to add a couple extra words. How come you have, well, I don't even get the, the inside joke right there. Right, yeah, just tell me where you find it and then also mention it. So send me an email and I'll, I'll uh, maybe I'll be able to download that and play that. 304. Hello, uh, this is yeah. Chad Watts. Sweet. How are you? Not bad. It's Cairo who was on the scene. Yeah, Still a bunch of people kept scene. telling me People kept saying to call in, and I, and I explained that I really didn't have much to add, but there were a couple of little things I guess I could put out there, and one of them makes me look like such a coward, if you'd like to hear it. Oh, yeah, what's um, that? <laughs> so there's terrible cell reception in, in Bardstown. So when I went down to the area where I flew the drone, I literally had to drive like two miles away to send you that picture. Like, Hey, is, is that the right area? So I sent it and then I drove back down to try to refly and get closer. And I saw the property owner taking down that little wire that kind of blocks the driveway right there. Mm -hmm. And I, and I freaked out and I was like, oh, he's looking for the guy that was just flying a drone. So I just like sped up and kept going. Oh, you were I'm an idiot. Oh, you were going to go back there? Like right here at yeah, the, well, I was gonna, at the, right yeah, by the was, bridge uh, or what? Yeah, I was going to, I was going to fly because I actually like, I went into Washington County and pulled off after the bridge. There's like a little road there in a pull off zone. Well, like with two poles on the side? Yeah, yeah, I was Wouldn't across pose. the street from the two poles. Oh, but okay. he was actually, like, on a little tractor removing that, you know, cable that goes between the two poles. Yeah. And um, I drove, I just, like, hit the gas. Well, that was probably the going. damn owner. You could have said, hey, do you mind if I go down well, there? He was the owner. Well, why don't you but go down there I, just to ask him? I'm He's explaining like a... it. I'm oh, explaining God. it. <laughs> Well, you were like, well, it's kind of private property, bro. You might not want to fight. You know what I mean? So I was like a little freaked out. And I was like, oh, no, I never said that. The cops. <laughs> well, no, 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 no. But anyway, yeah. so I'm like, wait, I need to go back and I need to talk to this dude. So I hit the driveway, the next driveway I seen, and I came back. And um, he was no longer there, so I, I pulled off. And I, I got out of the car and I yelled hello like two or three times and he was gone. So I was like, all right, I guess I'm just going to drive away. Cause if I did piss him off by flying the drone over his property and that's why he's here, I don't really want to deal with that. So yeah, I just came back to uh Bardstown and went to Walmart. But yeah, I'm an Sweet. idiot and I should have, I should have stopped and talked to him, but I'm going to be here all day tomorrow. So <laughs> I know what house is his. I'm going to knock on his door. Okay, that's a promise. I'm going to knock on dude's door. He probably just but lives also, a little bit further down the road, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I talked to a couple of people, and somebody told me, oh, yeah, he lives right there. Okay. But also, um, I talked to quite a few people, and Kentucky is a one-party consent state, so I can record conversations without anyone's permission as long as I'm involved. Well, there you go. But... <laughs> but uh not that I would ever do that <clears throat> but I talked to a couple of people you'd be surprised how many people like don't even know that something's going on like there were multiple people that were like crystal who yeah I don't know anything yeah, about that man. it's sort of like Delphi right like even people in that area don't <laughs> never heard of it yeah, yeah it's super weird but I did talk to this uh this girl at the uh, gas station up from the terrible hotel I'm at 
which, by the way, Bardstown does not have a great selection for hotels. And I don't even know why Hilton put their name on one of them because it was awful. But anyway, um, a couple of people had mentioned to me what we had kind of shortly discussed about uh, the the financial, like Crystal hiding financial paperwork and like telling her mom about it. Like people really think that just the people I've talked to, a couple of them really think that this all has to do with Brooks and Nick and just the financial aspect of the shady stuff that they have done. I mean, maybe that and includes drugs, it, though. You know, maybe it's not just like, you know, maybe drugs are part of the financial thing. Oh, yeah, I'm sure. I mean, why not? Yeah. And but, then, uh, you know, then maybe Ellis got up, was on to something at one point. I, I would not be surprised. But, like, I guess she told, I don't know, I don't know if it's even true, but I guess she told her mom, like, as the relationship was kind of breaking down, that she had some documents hidden, some financial documents that, would like, blow the lid off something, and she had them hidden. And, um, yeah, that was right before she disappeared, so I don't know, though. It might be interesting to go back and watch that, um... That show that was on, I'm not sure what channel it was, but it was a... Star Wars? No, it was a six-part episode. No, it wasn't Star Wars, okay. (laughs) Come on, you're just like the chat, man. Just boom, on to something else. (laughs) Listen, (laughs) like a little kid. (laughs) Oh, wow, wow, I get to watch Star Wars. Yay, I get to watch Star Wars, yay! Uh, Yeah, Uh, I don't even know what the hell I was saying anymore. Jesus. No, it might be it might be good to go back and watch this six. Oh yeah, yeah. There was like a, of... a full on documentary. Yeah, Oxygen. It was a, about a six parter, you know, where they just did a deep dive into it uh, a couple years ago, like 2018. It was pretty good. I know what you're talking about. I don't usually watch Oxygen, but I I'm aware of what you're talking about. But anyway, I'm going to. Uh, be hanging out in Bardstown tomorrow as well and I'm for for the for the third time I'm changing hotels because the hotels here leave uh, leave you wanting for a more cleanly place so <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> but I love I love Bardstown though I'm not I'm not hating on Bardstown or anyone that lives here it's a beautiful uh, Kentucky Anyway, maybe there, there's got to be like a, a four star hotel there, <laughs> dude. I stayed at the most most expensive hotel last night. It was terrible. Uh, I'm at one of the the second most expensive hotels. I'm gonna end up having to go to like the Bardstown Inn by Walmart. It's like sixty bucks a night. I'm gonna have to go there and pray that magically it's actually clean or something. I don't know. Wow. I'll let you go though. I'm not gonna sit here and discuss hotels while you're. Uh, but but thanks doing for uh, going relative. out there, and you know maybe you can go <laughs> walk around town and ask people questions. That's what I'm gonna people. do. And if I run into anybody tomorrow, if you're listening, I will not be recording our conversations to later Sun to Gray. I promise. <laughs> so <laughs> you heard that, right? Okay, good. <laughs> All right, I'll, I'll let you go. Have have All a good right. one. All right, thanks. Have a good one. Bye. No, it wasn't Star Wars. It was a documentary, though, on Anadarko oil. Yeah, Kathleen, but you you guys should have kept communicating, you and uh, Cairo, because then maybe you could um, let them interview Ellis' wife or something, or somebody out there that song in my house 
Did you send me the link to that uh, that hearing? All right. Well, the line's open, so people can call in with their theory. This is about time. Yeah, hopefully he gets something. Well, here's what I can do. Let's go over the other one for now, then. The uh, case of um, the Netherlands, Kathy Netherland and her, and her daughter. All right, so here he goes. Help is sought in a double murder in Nelson County. Kentucky State Police are asking the public to help identify potential witnesses to the double murder of a Nelson County woman and her daughter. Authorities say Kathy Netherland, 48, and Samantha Netherland, 16, were killed Monday night in their home on Springfield Road near Bardstown. Investigators have not disclosed how the woman, the, the women died, saying only they, that only that suffered, I think they meant that they suffered some form of trauma. State police said they are seeking three people seen traveling in the area Monday night. They want information on a dark Ford F-350 or F-450 flatbed pickup pulling a 20 to 24 foot cattle trailer, a newer model black Chevrolet Impala with four doors, and 1990 era Red Ford Ranger Super Cab pickup. That's a lot of vehicles to have been witnessed. It seems like I actually have that location. What was the name of that road again? That was uh, Springfield Road. Let's see. Yeah, there it is, right there. So it's not far away from all the other locations. I mean, look. That's where the Hawks lived. That's where the body was found. This is where they lived, right here. Oh, there goes the dogs. Here we go. And that's the house right there. It's kind of a weird house. That, like, it's not, doesn't seem like it should be should be there or something. Kentucky State Police have identified a suspect vehicle linked to the killing of two women. Investigators are searching for black 2006 the 2013 Chevrolet Impala that was seen driving from Boatland toward Bardstown around 8 p.m. Monday evening. Police said the car appears to be black in color and the windows do not appear to be tinted. KSP believes the occupant or occupants of this vehicle are suspects and are requesting help in identifying who they are. Any information anyone has regarding the vehicle or pertaining to this investigation in general, please contact the Kentucky State Police. This is back in 2014, late April. And this is April 23rd. This is the mother-daughter. I don't know if this one is related. It's just another unsolved case in the area right around that same time. Liver? What does liver have to do with this? Yeah. Anyways, Kathy and Samantha Netherland announced a $50,000 reward 
Tuesday for information leading to an arrest in the year-old double homicide. Speaking at a press conference at Kentucky State Police Post 4 in Elizabethtown, Holly Netherland's voice trembled with grief as she pleaded for anyone with information to come forward. A year ago, on April 22nd, I got a call that shattered my life, she said. My mother and sister were dead. My first thought was, God, we can't take them. Or, God, you can't take them. Police believe they were killed the night prior. Kathy, 48, a Bardstown City school teacher, was shot several times. Samantha, a Bardstown high school sophomore, was beaten several times in the head. Both women had their throats cut. KSP is investigating the crime, but spokesman trooper Jeff Gregory said the case won't be solved without the public's help. It's going to take information from the outside. Investigators have focused on finding a black late model Chevy Impala, which they said is tied to whoever murdered the mother and daughter. Police have obtained video surveillance footage of the vehicle and have followed up on hundreds of leads. Gregory said, but have yet to locate the vehicle. Police say it is tinted. It has tinted windows, possibly an antenna in the center above the rear window, and does not have a chrome stripe or spoiler. Does not have. So why mention it? Then? The family has set up a Facebook page. It's called um, Find That Car. No, let me see if that's there. It right here, yeah, that's probably it right here, and so that must be the vehicle right here. Hmm. So they, there is a website there, Facebook, and it's called Find That Car. And this is about the time where, since we're trying to build up for the end of the month, where Kit Kat would type in. Just say no. Just say no. Of course, you probably went to sleep. My sister will never be my maid of honor. It's weird because in that show that's on Oxygen, they kind of make it seem like the sister might have had something to do with it. And there was some information in there, like one of them was put on a chair for a while. Yeah, remember that? That was in that show about the cell phone jammer. Hmm. Let's see what the final one was about. No, it was just an obituary. <clears throat> Doesn't seem like it has a lot of details in here, though. So basically, on tonight's show, we showed the crime scene, or I don't know if it's a crime scene, but the area that um, a body was discovered. And you can see it's just sort of right in that area, too. That a body was discovered. It appears, it seems like it's Crystal Rogers' body based on the fact that the FBI got involved right after they excavated the body. And they got involved right away. It's only four miles from the farm that the Hauk brothers would hang out at. Yeah, I was hoping somebody that lives there would call in and talk about the case. You know, if you're really that concerned about helping out the 
case and getting information out there, it seems like it'd be a great time to call in if you're somebody that actually lives there and knows about it. You don't even have to say your real name. Yeah, and the body was found on the side of a bank in right here. And I think, as you can see right here, there's no brown area. That the body was buried probably right here. And then over time, this river or creek here, you can see how it bends. It's a meandering creek. So when the creek goes this way, it erodes on this bank. And then on this side, it erodes on over there. And <clears throat> over time, you get, you actually get what you, you're seeing right there, although that's a different creek. Um, like over, over the years, after this keeps eroding and eroding and eroding, eroding, you can sometimes get these little islands, and they're called oxbows because it kept eroding and eroding like this, and eventually it leaves a piece of land there. And uh, so they... You know, over, I guess the last few years, it's rained a lot there, and the water's been really high and rushing fast, and, and it's taken like 10 or 15 feet off of the of the bank there. So the bank has receded 15 feet, and it exposed, it looks like a burial site where there was bricks and, uh, you know, or I don't know if there were bricks, but man-made objects inside the grave, it looked like on top of the bones. And just to show that other, the, the really clear up close drone footage. Let, let's see where that is. I'll show you that again. It's right here. And it's interesting because even just looking at this, this looks like it's coming straight down at it. You can see how it, the top of the bank is much further in and uh, than where the base is. It's sort of at an angle. And then there's a tree that's in the water right there, basically. It looks like it, it was eroded in. And when you look at Google Earth, that's this tree right there. And at that point, it's still up on the bank. This tree right here and that tree are this one, these, these ones right there, but let me back out a little bit. Yeah, so you can see them right there. You got like this tree, this one, that one. And then, I don't know which, if it's like this one, this one, and then there's one right there. There's a third over here, let's see if that exists. Yeah, there's another around the corner there. Yeah. So maybe that's it. I think it might be more like... Let me see what the angle is on that video again. No, it's straight like that. So there's one on the corner. Yeah, and then it kind of turns hard there. So if you're right there... Yeah, so it goes like that. So it's right here. And it looks like the bank is pretty intact at that point. It's a little higher though, so it's hard to tell the water is. I'm not even sure what that means, Alan. I mean, you didn't even say my name right. You didn't even... It's just... It's so stupid, these idiots that show up. They think they're just so funny, and it's just... God, it's crazy. Yeah, and again, that one image 
is it right here. This is what it looked like before the FBI came out and excavated. Okay, so you can see that that there was a layer placed probably on top of the body that was in the grave there. I think these might be bones right there. I don't know for sure. And I guess it's possible that some of it actually v has already washed away. Well, you know, it's just to cover it up. I don't know what the reasoning a lot of times, maybe so animals can't dig out the body. But, you know, like even in the Rexburg case, you know, they covered him with a bunch of different stuff. I don't know what the reasoning before, but maybe so that like a, an animal can't dig down and then take the body out. And it's weird because you can see the depth at which, you know, it's probably made six feet down, you know, from the surface, something like that. Maybe not quite six feet, maybe three or four feet. But now that I look at that. But, but see, that's, that's an interesting, just right there, that shot, right? So check this out right here. This whole bank here. Now, it could be that there was people standing there that did that, but... Notice how this whole bank is green, green, and then right there, it's not. And then right there, it's green, 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 green. Now, it could be that this is what it looks like, because four years is a lot of time, and seems like weeds would have grown there. But who knows? Maybe they put something in there, but it's weird that it's there's nothing there. But if you go to Google Earth, and you look at it in, uh, before the body was there, there isn't that little dirt spot there. Man, thank God for that um, that wave earlier. <whistles> wow. It got really cold in here really fast. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. They put the bricks on there for the, um, you know, to make sure an animal doesn't dig the body out. Right? It would be pretty difficult. One thing about these little neck pump things, it actually messes my ear up. Like it's so tight on my ears. Anyways, I'll be back in a minute.
sure what Dutch was just typing in there. It was one of the worst written sentences I've ever seen. Again, we, we, I don't know what's going on on this channel. But, uh, I just came in with reading comments and just trying to really... You know, maybe, maybe it was all girl code or something. I, I don't know. I just didn't understand a word of it. it almost sounded like something Joe Biden would say. Just really incoherent. Just did you hear what Biden said the other day? What the hell did he say? He said, he literally said, um, you know, unlike the black community, the Hispanic community is really diverse. It's like, what a, he, you know, here's the thing is, Biden is a racist. I mean, he has racist roots. But nobody points that out. He's an idiot. Remember his thing, you can't go to a 7-Eleven without there being, you know. It's incredible. All right, anyways, what do we got here? He's just, it's incredible that people just overlook the shit he says. <laughs> it's mind boggling. Yeah, no, it's okay because it's Biden, though, Benjamin. Yeah, it's okay. Who cares what he says? Yeah, remember that? He did say that. <laughs> he said. Yeah, I get tested every day, and then they go, "Are you, are you kidding me, man?" Or whatever he says. Of course, I never get tested. Why would I? Yeah, definitely got on a donation lull there. Cause we're, I'm just try, I just try to have a consistent thing on a nightly basis for the end of the month, or we'll have, or it, or it sort of drops. I get nervous. I don't want to drop. I want to keep getting higher and higher. But, uh, you know, some nights are just the way it is. You know, it's a freaking uh, what? What's tonight? A Wednesday? Or no, today's Friday, right? <laughs> I don't even know what day it is. You know why? Because I don't care what day it is. It doesn't, it, there's not Friday, a Saturday doesn't mean anything. I know, how did it end up being Biden? It's just, it's mind boggling. Anybody else? Hey, there, see, there you go. There's Zozo. <laughs> 89 cents from Australia. Thank you very much. Yeah. If you believe that, you're a lying dog face pony soldier. Man, if you took, you could make the greatest anti Biden commercial that ever existed, except it would all be explained away. It means something. Wow, Meredith McKenzie. And it's one penny short of the cat eye, I think. I don't know. And Katie too, and Chrissy Paris. Okay, good. Now, now we're probably at a, a, a normal night pace. And right now, we've, for those of you out there wondering what the hell I'm talking about, is we've donated ten thousand six hundred dollars so far to charities this year. And after the end of this month, I'm hoping to be around, you know. Hopefully around thirteen thousand, because I want to be over twenty at the end of the year. I think that would be insane. I think it'd be like, uh, you know, remember our goal was ten for the year. <laughs> We're way over that. So my goal is twenty thousand dollars at the end of the year. Let's That's do what the this. new goal Throwing is. Kisses. Well, thank you, Meredith McKenzie. That was really nice. And Katie, too. And Chrissy Paradis. And Allison R. And... 
Apocalypse Frog. Which I think means woman, right? Didn't we come up with that before? <laughs> yeah, yep. And if I ever, if I ever get to 50,000, it's been the slowest last 200 I've ever seen. Um, if I ever get to 50,000 subs, I might try to get... Um, uh, Colleen Fitzpatrick on. She said she'd be really happy to come on, even a answer questions. I mean, how cool would that be? And then we can figure out a way because she's, she oh, right now Colleen Fitzpatrick doesn't isn't part of well she's a founder of DNA Doe Project, but she's no not longer working there. Go FBI. She's focused completely on the um, what do you call it the identifinders, and they're trying to figure out a way where you can donate there. And how cool would that be? There's there's a couple months like in, we could do one month where we only donate the twenty four hundred to them, and it would pay for an entire invest um, the DNA the blue parts of the map is water. research. Yet. Remember that and we could actually he, he, he. pay for solving a case. How cool would that be? Oh, and thanks, uh, Vicky Ballard, Cairo, Timothy Cecil, and KitKat. So they're trying to figure out a way, some sort of an organization where you can donate through where it's an actual charity, but then it goes to them to pay for that. And she mentioned that. I talked to her. I mean, you guys don't know this, but probably like two weeks ago, I just called her up randomly. And we talked for like an hour again. I mean, I mean, she's so interesting, but she does make you feel like your brain, like she's so smart. It's, I love it's like talking to Einstein. We donate Oh, hey, thanks. Amy Fountain. And Kit Kat. We've got this. <laughs> Can you get a recap? That's right, Timothy. Go FBI. The blue part of the map is water. Remember that. Okay, yeah. You guys are so cool. Just and got back to the live. I'm gonna Can make a three D. I'm gonna make a three D version of this. Rolling on the floor, this. laughing. Rolling on the floor, laughing. I'm gonna make a three D version of the freak heart. It's gonna be really cool. It'll rotate on the screen with a transparent background. It'll probably be flat surface heart, but then the freak will stick out. Kind of how it looks First right now. First time doing this, but I wanted to join the wave with my freak fam wave raising hands, medium light skin tone wave. And then maybe we'll have music. <laughs> yeah, you guys are so kind. It's crazy. I know. I I don't like bringing up that aspect of it, but right now we've been on such a great roll as a channel. You know, you guys know how it all works. I've told you before, okay? Because I'm transparent here. Um, you know, so... Well, how does it work? Okay, so the money that actually I get from YouTube and channel memberships and all of the uh, Super Chats... Here's I, a bit from Quincy the Leopard from atop the Hermit Mound. <laughs> I take 25% of all of that and donate it to charity... And, but, you know, I get taxed on the total amount, too, right? So, you know, I spend like two, three hours a night on here. And so it turns out where 60%, 40% of what I take home goes to charity. Okay? So that's how it works at the end of the month. And then I actually donate a lot more because I get, sometimes I get PayPal money and I'll throw it in as a bonus. So it's like. I usually do like 30% 30, um, 30 of the gross income. So there you go. Thanks, Wally Gator and Susie B and Susanna Macgiola Padraig. Quincy the Leopard from atop the Hermit Mound. <laughs> oh, that's right. You dug into the hole there, right? Yeah. Hey, that's a rhyme. Madame! 
I wonder if that works with that beat. That slower beat. Let me see that one. Where is that one? My dime helping to bust crime. Thanks for all you do, Gray Yarmini. <laughs> Gray? You're so mean. <laughs> oh, golly, Gray. You're just so mean. <laughs> My time. Happened to boss crime. <laughs> yeah. So I'm sitting here walking down the street and I had to stop and drop the radio. Now somebody said it sounded like that. Too short music. I bet you could do it to that. Let's see. Walking down the street and I had to stop and drop the radio and drop the top. Boom, boom, boom. <laughs> yeah, that was a lady. I don't really have anything else to add to it. Whatever um, S friend typed in up there, uh, I just did her two lines. If she had typed more, might have been able to do it more, but that was it. I just thought it sounded like it was going to be cool. One of these days, I'll write one that goes to this one. It's slower. It's a little bit slower. Let's do this, freaks. Thanks, Katie, too. Boom, 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 boom. No dark times. Dark times is pretty good. One. It was a scary night. Oh, twenty-five, thirty years ago, when Zozo. The clown. <laughs> hey, thanks, Zozo and Cece. Spit and Yeah, it would have been cool. I need the whole rap, though. Gray Hughes spit and rhymes. That, that music always Chart. makes me saddy. Uh, saddy. Jesus. Saddy. <laughs> I think there's too much pressure on this thing on my face. Okay. Hey, thanks. Alicia C. Yeah. I think there's just, it's just squeezing my face, Sarita. Yeah, saddy. <laughs> See? Oh yeah, you want to do a newspaper.com? Okay, first Yo, I got to do my cozoids. my intro using my this music. On the green forests in the Pacific Northwest, I bid you all good evening. Now, he didn't even do as good as Gray does, okay? From the green forests and the Pacific Northwest, 
I bid you all good evening, or good morning as the case may be. Tonight, we'll be checking out newspapers.com. And thank you, Chrissy Paradis and Miss Skiss, for that lovely donation just prior to doing the newspaper.com request hour. Okay, so after that, we will now get started on newspaper.com. I think my Tylenol, I took two extra strength Tylenol earlier and it seemed to be kicking in now, right about Newspaper now. Newspaper away for Kit Kat. Okay, so here, let's see, how would we do it? I was, I was wondering if we should do newspapers.com where you send in, you have to send in like a $1 super chat to pick one. <laughs> and then I do it. Because that way you, 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 um, I forget it. I don't want to. It's just too hard to read through when you guys all type them in. You know, like you type in, uh, like everybody goes, oh, do this one, do this one, do this one. And then it's like, I don't even know which one, who typed it in. So anyways, go ahead. Pick one. Somebody type something in. And... What are we searching? A bloody glove. That's going to come up with OJ right off the bat, don't you think? <laughs> Give me a state and bloody glove. I think that's got to be part of it. You pick a state and the the phrase. Well, Kit Kat picked a pretty good one last time. Okay, Arizona bloody 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 love. Okay, let's try. Oh. Oops. There we go. I had to sign in with my uh, Facebook. Back to me. <clears throat> okay, there you go, there you go. Gun. Bloody gloves found at Florida suspect's home. State police found bloodstained gloves and a 38 caliber handgun in the home of a suspect in the stabbing death of five college students, a newspaper reported Sunday. But the suspect's grandmother said the blood and glove found in a search of her home in Indy Atlantic on September 6 are hers. Police said Edward Lewis Humphrey, 18, is one of eight suspects in the sling in off-campus apartments August 26 through 28. This must be a serial killer incident right here, right? Eh? Humphrey has not been charged in the slings. He's being held on $1 million bail. This is 1990. Well, well, what happened? What is this case here? What are you guys talking about? And that was actually in Florida. Gainesville, Florida. Was that, wasn't that one of Bundy? No, that was too late, 1990. Huh. Well, what was going on in 1990 where five college students were killed? Stabbing death of five college students. Hmm. Now, now, I'm, gonna, now I'm curious to go look at that one.
State agents searching the in the Atlantic home of Edward Lewis Humphrey found bloodstain. Let me see what this is about. Let me go back. So this is back in See, that was a serial killer case, see that? Look at that shit. The killing of five Gainesville college students is unparalleled among serial murders, law enforcement experts and criminologists say. <laughs> I don't think that's not paralleled. Serial killers average four or five slangs a year, rarely killing more than once over a few days, said Philip Jenkins. It would suggest you are really dealing with somebody who has had major, major psychological problems, finally cracked, and is on a binge. The killer didn't just begin, begin this yesterday, said Marilyn Moore, a professor at Sam Houston State University in Huntsville, Texas. We're talking about a pattern of behavior. Moore, Former Eugene, Oregon assistant police chief led a special... Wow, I live in Oregon. I must be able to... Gainesville killer probably has killed in the past, may have committed sex offenses, and may have been... So what are the circumstances around this? Okay, so it's right here. University of Florida, Gainesville, five students four from University of Florida and one from nearby Santa Fe Community College were found slain in a 48-hour period, August 26th through the 28th. Police have made no arrest. Oh, look at that. And see, as I, was, I mentioned Bundy earlier, but it says Theodore Bundy attacked an FSU sorority house. That's what made me think of that right off the bat, which left two women dead was part of a string of murders committed across the country over several years. Bundy died in 1989. Um, Ed, Ed Kemper killed about 10 women, most from uh, UCSC or nearby smaller colleges. So, did they ever catch who this person was? Right here? Huh. Let's see. How would we find the answer to if that one's been solved? August 27th, 1990 to August 29th, 1990. And then that's not going to say that. Ah, oh, shit. That didn't work. Fuck. Okay, there we go. Uh, What the heck? It's like buffering. <sighs> Did anybody find where that, uh, anything about that? Like a newspaper.com is unavailable right now. Oh, there it is. Try it again. Florida. August 27, 1990, to August 29, 1990, Florida, 
university student killed. Okay, so we just need to get one name of one person. Yeah. No clues after 20 months in Tiffany session. That's a whole different case there. How about that one? Has that ever been solved? Tiffany sessions? Police announced break. Oh, look at that shit. <laughs> That one random story from 1990. She disappeared without a trace. Police are just hours away from announcing a major break in the case of Tiffany Sessions, a South Florida girl who disappeared while out for a jog in Gainesville. Local Tiffany. Detectives are looking for her body once again right here. Universe. Oh, and John Walsh. We haven't been able to. Yeah, this is crazy. With a I love how it just kind of flows like that. To indicate there was anything. That's just crazy shit. Oh, yeah, I guess the music was kind of loud. I can't hear it, though, because my headphones are way up on my head, so it's just luck if I can hear it. <clears throat> so apparently, I don't know if it was ever solved, though. Uh, Tiffany. Oh, they think it was Paul Eugene Rolls was responsible for Sessions' disappearance and murder. At the time that Sessions had disappeared, Rolls was working for a construction-related company near the path where Sessions had been last seen. And we've seen this guy before. I've seen his face. Have we discussed this case before? Apparently she was. And raping. See that guy. I've seen that guy before. Serial killer. All right. Special Task Force, uh, nine hours later on 1 a.m. Monday, the body of Krista Hoyt. Let's see. So let's type that in. Krista Hoyt murder. Covered in blood after stabbing her roommates more than 30 times, Danny Rowling didn't lie when the doomed Tracy Pauls asked him a question. You're the one, aren't you? She said when the man who would... Oh, see, this is, this is the answer to that story. You're the one, aren't you? She said when the man would rape and murder her, burst into her bedroom, a foot-long military knife. Yeah, I'm the one, he said. The same Danny Rowling would later fall to the floor of his jail cell, moan about demons, stare at the sun, and become so angry when Madonna appeared on television that he said the singer ought to have her head cut off. All right, now let's look up Danny Rowling. And there he is. The Gainesville Ripper is what he was called. <laughs> See that? We figured it out, everybody. Just from a random newspaper.com story, this would make a great, uh, would have made a great show. <laughs> I mean, just this whole thing right here. Let's see what he says about him in Murder Murderpedia. Uh, eight victims. Julie Grissom, 24. I mean, he killed a lot of people. Her nephew, eight-year-old. I mean, Jesus. So there you go. All right, what's next? All right, what's next? Thanks, Jen H. Yeah, it's kind of neat. Uh, I sort right now. I have a, a. I've done it so many times that I quickly look up certain things to get answers kind of fast um, using Google and newspapers.com. So what's what's the next one? Gruesome? I mean, how many articles do you think have the term gruesome in it? 
You have to have, be more specific than that. Okay, I'm going to do this. I'll tell you guys again. Think of the wording that would be in an article. Well, trunk of cars, it could be a thousand different stories. You have to add something to it that makes it crime related. Think how many stories would say trunk of car. Well, Susie put her baseball bat and glove in the trunk of the car and they went to on a trip. Well, Sandy put her suitcase in the trunk of her car and they... Yeah, you got to give a state, Kit Kat. Remember? Yeah. Try to find something that's unusual. That would... Missing woman trunk. See, that's not a... That's never would an article say missing woman trunk in it. Arms and legs. Are you thinking of a specific story, Melissa? So I want people where you don't know what you want. You're just coming up with a random guess. I don't want you to go, okay, yes, okay. Um, bodies found under house. And then throw up a state where like, uh, you know, not Dahmer. But who's the other guy? That Yeah, Casey. Gacy, I mean. Like where he lived, right? Ohio. I don't know if he's from Ohio. That sounds right. Though. I'm not going to see above. You have to type it in again if you want me to see it. <laughs> see above. Why didn't you just type it in again? <laughs> and then I would have saw that one. That was Iowa? Okay. Okay, but you just didn't type it in again, though. You know? Like, again, you wasted the time. I've read those comments, but you didn't type it in again. Okay. I'll do what Kit Kat said. Okay. Arkansas. 1950 to 1985. That's what I'm going to put in there. Um, victim escapes. 1969, wealthy, wealthy kidnapping victim escapes. <laughs> Kit Kat, see, she always gets it right the way she does it. No, I don't, I'm not looking for specific information, Carla. I want just random words that lead to random things that you don't know about. Okay, so here we go. Um, a wealthy Las Vegas landowner dashed across the darkened field to end what police described as a fantastic $800,000 kidnap plot. Two men were arrested... And a third person was being sought today. The victim, Dean, or you know, Dean, Deanne, I don't know if it's Deanne or, but it's Dean Peterson, escaped from, no, it's a guy, his abductors Friday night by somehow breaking a set of handcuffs, slipping from a small motorized camper, then running a quarter mile across a field to a crowded supermarket where he telephoned the sheriff's office. I don't know how I got here. Policeman said Peterson mumbled as he was taken to the police station for question. So there's one. Let's see, was there? Let's see if there's another story. So that was 1959. This is from 1950 right here. I think that's different. Okay, what do we got? 
Well, no, it's not strict. I already explained it 15 times, Carla. I don't want, like, hey, look up uh, Ted Bundy, Oregon, 19, you know, it's, you know, this is uh, when we're doing the newspapers.com thing. It's just, you give me a state and then type in a phrase that would actually show up. In an article, like a well, you know, like uh, something simple, like when you say something like um, Kansas dismembered body, right? Boom. Okay. The phrase dismembered body is going to lead to something pretty crazy, right? You know, typing in uh, Florida uh, holding your arm. I mean, that doesn't do anything. Okay, Michigan body and freezer. Okay, there we go. Yeah, there we go. Woman's body and freezer. Literally... It literally was a scene straight out of a movie. <laughs> In a film televised here Monday night, Dean Martin, see, there you go. It literally was. So now I've got to go to a different story. I thought you got lucky and found something crazy, but this one literally was a scene right out of a movie. Well, actually, it says right here, four youth inspired by the movie decided to break open a mysterious sealed freezer. Oh, okay, now we're going to read this one because now it's kind of weird. In a film televised here Monday night, Dean Martin, as Detective Matt Helm, yanked open the door of a freezer and out tumbled the frozen body of a shapely blonde. Four youths, inspired by the movie, decided to break open a mysterious sealed freezer in their own dining room. Inside, behind the turkey pies and vegetables, was the frozen body of a young, dark-haired woman. Oh, my God. <laughs> That's crazy. Police identified the body, suntanned and clad in shorts and halter as Grace Evelyn Todd, 34. Her husband, David Wilford Todd, 38, was charged with non-capital murder. Well, what other, what other kind would it be? Police said the body had been in the freezer about six months. Today, had brought the freezer with him or, no, excuse me, Todd had brought, brought the freezer with him when he moved into the home of Catherine Cassidy, 15, and her brother, Charles, 21, on December 1st, when the Cassidy children, along with John Moore, 19, and Lane Jackson, 18, pried open the freezer, we could see the whole body with the head wrapped in towels. Police said Mrs. Todd had been reported missing December 21st by her mother, a resident of Burlington, Ontario, although she had not been seen since late July by neighbors of the Northeast Toronto home she shared with Todd. Neighbors said that when they questioned Mrs. Todd's absence, they were told she was visiting her mother in the United States. Police said preliminary examination of Mrs. Todd's body indicated she had been shot through the head with a 22 caliber rifle a complete post-mortem was delayed until the body thawed. Well, there you go. That's a crazy one. All right. So, okay. What's the next one? <laughs> it just shows you how much craziness is actually out there. Okay. And what's this one? Jesus. This is 1958. That was 72. London, the killer of 17-year-old girl kept her body in a freezer for almost a month, Scotland Yard revealed Monday night. The girl, Anne Noblet, vanished while returning home from a bus stop December 30th. Her body was found five weeks later in a wood 10 miles away. Police said Monday night the body was frozen solid when found. Her inner garments were dry, indicating that the body had been dumped in the woods only a short time after it was found. I mean, right? You mean be time before it was found. I'm not sure why I said after. It doesn't say that there. Okay, what's the next one? 
Come on, Carla. Come up with a, a, a random one. You can do it. I know you can. Yeah, you didn't do the state, B&B. &B. Wow, this lady committed suicide by putting herself in a freezer. Carla took off because I was too strict. Yeah, see, but in a serial killer, you're just being too, you know, too... Okay, is that a case that you know about, Chrissy Paradis? Or is that just totally random? See, I've, okay, I'm already telling you guys this. Don't know of a case and then throw out the words that lead me to your case. Okay? Just make it completely random. All right, so I'm going to do what Chrissy Paradis did then. Let's see. She says it's totally random. Torso, and then sewer, you know, it'd probably be like found sewer drain, but it's the correct order. And that was in, um, Georgia. Anyway, why did that change back to that? That's weird. This is an article about, I think, the Cleveland torso murders. Torso murder, yeah. Oh, drain. Torso, sewer, drain. I'll just say sewer. That, that would... Yeah, I don't think that that's. I don't think that's what you're looking for. All right, what do we got? <laughs> it's not really a game. Okay. Is there somebody that was that you know of that was a chainsaw killer in Montana? one in Iowa. Now look at that. Testimony in the trial of a chiropractor 
accused of killing his wife with a chainsaw and throwing the pieces into the Mississippi River ended with jurors hearing the defendant tape recorded vow to get rid of his wife. Well, there you go. Authorities contend a torso fished out of the Mississippi is that of Mrs. Kleint. A determination made by sophisticated genetic tests. In 1984? Come on. Wow. I mean, I've heard of chiropractors, you know, manipulating a body, but that's getting a little crazy, don't you think? You okay, Jackie? Are you alright? You seem upset. Like I said, I think if you if you did if we did it where you send in a dollar and you type it in, I'd probably see it better. <laughs> Plus it helps out at the end of the month. Let's see, let me put that in there. That could find something. Minnesota. Oh, this is about Nazi concentration camps. Well, not much on that one. Wow, Meredith McKenzie. What, did you win the... Uh, the <laughs> well, you didn't win the lottery. You sold a house. Houses. I think that was you. No, that was... Was that you? Or was that um, McGlock? I can't... No, I can't... My brain isn't working. Thank you. Wow. <laughs> you had a good week. Oh, that, that's what I thought. I was that was Jamie McLaughlin, right? Yeah. That's what I thought. That's why I was thinking, wasn't that McLaughlin? And then I stopped because I didn't want to be wrong. Hey, so for once, my brain was actually thinking of the right thing. Well, thank you very much, Meredith. Double cat eye. Ding, 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 ding. Well, I, I, I snuck in a lizard eye, too. Okay. All right, what's another one here? I tried doing what... <laughs> yep. Oh, you guys thought my joke about the chiropractor was funny up there. Okay, good. Okay, I'll try that one. I'll do, I'm going to do life stirred up. Connecticut. Well, there you go. 1990. Girl found, found dead was strangled with necktie, police say. 
A Hartford girl found dead near a remote road Sunday was strangled with a necktie and dumped down an embankment. I mean, this is right here is what serial killers do right here. State police identified the girl as Tamika Mayo, 15 of 196 Newfield Avenue. Her body was found by a passerby. Okay, so let's check this out really fast. Wow, there you go. Another serial killer. So she probably typed that in knowing I was going to come up with this. <laughs> All right. During a four-year period, five women who... Alfred Swinton admitted knowing were murdered and their bodies dumped throughout the Artford area. On January 13, 1991, uh, Carla Terry and then Tamika Mayo. And now let's look up this guy, Alfred Swinton, the serial killer. Alfred Swinton, once considered a possible serial killer by law enforcement authorities. Body found oh. duct taped. Any well, he state. Got let go. So, who killed those girls then at this point? Hmm. Yeah, DNA cleared him. Wow, I wonder how long he was in prison for. That sucks. I hate that shit. Wow. Well, they need to do genetic genealogy then on the DNA that they do have. See if they can find something who did it. Thanks, Fiber Sleuth. Body found duct tape. Well, we, we covered one that even had that. No, you have to pick a state, though, Fiber Sloop. That's part of the requirement. So throw out a state really quick. What about you, Stacy? Why don't you throw something out? We'll do that one next. Body found tied to tree, Michigan. Is that one that we covered? Or is that just random? Because I remember we did two, a case where we had two women that, or a guy and a girl that were tied to a tree. Yeah, see, that's exactly what I'm talking about. Kinds like that. Oh, were you? Oh, that's funny. I thought you heard me really quick. I was like, wow, the lag on Stacy's uh, computer isn't anywhere near everybody else. She answered that sucker in like two seconds. All right, uh, 1954. Burned body found tied to tree in ravine. Oh, Jesus. The body of a man burned to death while tied to a tree was found in a ravine here Wednesday, and police said today the bizarre death may have been a suicide. Oh, maybe. But why did he tie himself to the tree, though? Yeah, how, how do you know that? The body was clad only in long underwear. Firemen put out a fire at the scene Wednesday, apparently the same fire in which the man was which the man died 
but were unaware there was a body tied to the tree. The man was identified tentatively as James Nelson, a transient who had been employed in the kitchen of a hotel. What, they find the gas next to him? And, oh yeah, he did it. Okay, 1979, a body found, this is Alabama, but it's in a Michigan newspaper. A body found tied to a tree Saturday in northwest Madison County, Alabama, was identified as that of Tennessee Deputy Sheriff, oh boy, missing since Tuesday. Sheriff Joe Patterson of Madison County identified the body as Dixon County Deputy James Crawford DeLones, 41 of Dixon, Tennessee. Patterson, the loans had been shot twice. The badly decomposed body was found tied to a tree near a cotton field, according to news photographs at the scene. Photographers. A farmer reported finding the body. Dixon County Sheriff Doyle Wall said the loans had gone to Decatur, Alabama to visit relatives and failed to report for duty Tuesday. Okay, what's his name again? Sheriff. Okay, his name is. Um, okay, James Crawford DeLones. James Crawford DeLones murder. Huh. Well, here's his grave. You know, find a grave right here. But. I don't see it. That's, that's a weird one. All right, who's next? <laughs> yeah, no thanks, Cairo. No thanks. Yes, everybody, hit that subscribe button and the like button. We got to get to 50,000 here. Right, it just doesn't make any sense. And why... And. You know, I mean, if you tied yourself to a tree, how would you then light the fire but not be able to get away? It just doesn't make sense. Yeah, but you didn't do the state, Zozo. You didn't do the state. Now, we had that one crazy case from, what was it, the 60s or something like that with the whole family on that vacation, dead. That was a gas one. Yeah, it does. Uh, it is kind of crazy the stuff you can find in here, Cairo. Teen charged with murder after family found dead in house. A 15 year old boy, this is 2008, 
fatally shot his parents and two younger brothers as they slept, then spent more than 12 hours with friends before returning home and calling 911 to report that his father was dead. Police went to their suburban Baltimore home and later charged Nicholas Wagner Browning after he admitted to slaying to the slangs, Baltimore County Police Spokesman Bill Tui said. And by the way, if I don't see what you typed in, it doesn't mean that I didn't like you. Okay? Don't feel like I'm intentionally ignoring you. <laughs> hey, Alicia, uh, remains found in desert Arizona. How many stories do you think that's going to come up with? That's going to be like a thousand. No, I didn't see yours. Now, had you sent in a dollar, it might have, might have popped up on the screen, you know. Yeah, and I can tell that was probably a case that you knew about. That's why you typed in Milwaukee, bodies found in house wall. So you know, anytime somebody's that specific, I think they probably already know the case. Yeah. Okay. All right. Let's see then. If you made that up, if you're being honest and you said you made that up, that just sounds like you almost sound like a psychic at that point. Okay. I'll, I'll, I'll be able to find yours, Michelle, here in a second. Let me try this one. Ah. Bodies found in salvage yard in Arkansas. Okay, Milwaukee, right? Nope, didn't see any. Didn't see any. Okay. Now I'm going to do... Uh... Wait. <laughs> Body found duct tape. i got to do fiber sleuth first. Body found duct tape. I didn't even see that. That's weird. Okay, here's one. And then I'll do uh, Michelle's next. I didn't I just didn't want to I missed the other one. The region held its breath as searchers combed the woods intensely for three days, then called the full time search off because of money concerns, Miss Stiles said. The family kept searching on their own. Then in November 25th, days after she disappeared, her body was found duct taped to a tree. She had been raped and shot in the head. Jesus, what case is this? Yeah, so this is the case of... Karen Lynn Stiles. Have we talked about this one? No.
Okay, now I have to go figure this one out. So this is in um, this is in North Carolina. Karen Styles. Okay, so this is something, I think this is it right here, the main story. You guys ever heard of this one? I haven't. Well shit, I'm gonna put this one off to the side instead of going over it now. Hold on. Looks like, looks like too big of one to just sort of let it, uh, you know, just do a quick little thing and forget about it. All right, so we'll go over that one on a show. <laughs> All right, so let me go up here to Michelle Nicola, Niklas, I call her. Bodies found in salvage yard, Alcon, Arkansas. Well, 2016, police ID bodies found in salvage yard. Authorities have identified two Yell County men who were found dead in a salvage yard outside Russell, Russellville. The Pope County Sheriff's Office on Wednesday said the state crime lab identified the bodies found at the U Pull It Auto Salvage Yard as Aaron Brock and Bo DeWitt. Sheriff's Office said the deaths are being investigated as a homicide. The bodies were found inside a vehicle at the salvage yard Tuesday afternoon and were taken to the crime lab. B.A.U. DeWitt. Man, f oh, here we go. Jeez, look at that guy. A Pope County jury found Tyler Bearfield guilty of two counts of capital murder Wednesday, and we just lost the the thing. Let's see. There we go. Let's go to that one. Let me try it. Don't run on this page. Is that going to do it? Maybe, maybe, maybe. Okay, Bearfield 36 had faced the charges in the death of Aaron Brock and Bo DeWitt, both 22 of Dardenville, who were fatally shot in September 2016 at the scrapyard Bearfield Company owns with his family, according to prosecutors. Their mangled bodies were recovered from a pile of smashed cars at the spray yard. You pull it auto parts of Russellville. Well, there you go. Crazy, huh? All kinds of stories out there. All right. Anyways, I think I'm about done, you guys. My, I'm just going to go get a rest in. But hey, that was cool. I'm gonna take. I'm gonna look into that other story we were talking about right there at the end. I think it's this one. Is that right? Yeah. Let's see what happened in that case.
All right. So what's going on, everybody? It's kind of late. Yeah, it's pretty fun. We should do that like once a week or something. <laughs> well, I, yeah. Well, I like looked one of yours up, didn't I, Jen? A couple times. Yeah, well, you tried. Almost worked. Well, cool, hey, and also, sorry about uh, early when my voice wasn't even on and I was talking for like 10 minutes. You probably thought I was still on a phone or something. And then when I started talking about something on the screen and didn't have that on the screen. So that's it, everybody. Uh... Let's see. Let me go through this. Thank you to Michelle Nicholas, Foxy Bot, Zozo, Charlene, Bitsy Boo, Chrissy Paradis, Kit Kat, Sarah Brown, Shogun Love, Bitsy Boo, Christina Kubachek, Lori Staggs, Carolina T, Sherlock Hemlock, Chrissy Paradis, Cairo, Mysterious Monkey, Sapphire, Tracy, One Sly Angel, Zozo, CC, Kit Kat, Allison R, Allison R, Chrissy Paradis, Zozo, Sherlock Hemlock, Madonna, Zozo, Meredith McKenzie, with a cat eye donation. Katie 2, Chrissy Paradis, Allison R, Apocalypse Fra, Melissa Crone Carville, Vicky Ballard, Cairo, Timothy Cecil, Kit Kat, Amy Fountain, Susanna MacGilla Padrick, Wally Gator, Susie B. S friend, Kitty Two, Zozo, CC, Al Alicia C, Chrissy Paradis, Miss Skiss, and then Meredith McKenzie with the double cat eye donation. Zozo, Fiber Sleuth, and Michelle Nicholas. And then also on uh, PayPal, we've got Doris and also Serena. So thank you very much. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> I was just laughing at an email. Oh, and then Curious Georgia right at the end there, and S Friend. Awesome. Thank you guys very much. All right, cool. That added quite a bit to the end of the month. Really appreciate it. So everybody, make sure you're all out there. Thank you to all the nurses again. Uh, make sure that you're wearing your masks. Um, you're washing your hands all the time before you eat anything specifically or touch your face. And maintain social distancing. Uh, but we got to keep this economy going. Um, and we just, you know, the thing is, is there's, a, there's this balancing act you got to do. You can't just sort of shut down your economy forever. Okay? We, it would destroy the entire country. I mean, it really would. Unless they did what I said, which was called um, Nona. Nobody owes nobody anything. The entire world turns off the stock market. Everybody shelters in place at home for like 45 days. They are given only money for groceries. And only those kinds of people are still doing things. People who supply groceries, those kind of things. And obviously hospitals are open. But everybody stays at home and nobody owes any bills of any kind. And you get to still live in your house and you get free electricity. You get free everything until the 45 days is up and then you come out and everybody wears masks for a while until we know where we're at with a virus okay but as soon as you start having people owe things and people get greedy like the banks go hey you didn't give me this and then you don't then you lose your house and all that shit it ruins the whole thing you have to do it for 45 days something called nona where nobody owes nobody anything 
It's just the only way to do it. You can't have it where people owe something and they get behind and then everybody's like, oh, well, and then you get late fees and you get this and this. It's, just, it's bullshit, okay? You can't do it that way. So, there you go, everybody. Uh, hashtag Nona. <laughs> And uh, anyways, I really appreciate all of you guys. Uh, thank you all for showing up tonight. You guys are awesome. And as I always say, everybody, until next time, and we'll see you guys tomorrow. Be safe out there. Yeah, I've been doing this true crime thing for quite a while now. And during this whole time, I have not seen one person that is a... Gonna get ya on a stretcher if you try and play me like an old projector. gonna give another lecture. Crime collector, free collector, and I'm always gonna be a pup protector. with a vector on his pector with a respecter. Just remember, I've a temple fucking checkcha. I have no agenda. I'm no pretender. And I'll serve it to you straight without a blender. And in the end, I'm gonna, gonna send you on a mission to reveal the true offender. Yeah, so I'll just get right back to work. All right, everybody. All right. Hey, did you forget some of the lines there, Mary Lou? It seemed like you were trying to wrap it right at the end. You kind of messed up. What do you mean, John Boy? You're so mean. I mean, I was just trying to end the show and say, hey, good night, John Boy. I know, I know, I know. You always try to do that, but I just wanted to tell you your rap wasn't really that good, okay? It actually kind of sucked there. Oh, gosh, you're so mean, John Boy. I try my best. I try to learn the raps as hard as I can. And I just... Oh, my God. You're going to whine about that? That is absolutely crazy. Wow. That is unbelievable. Okay. Good night, Mary Lou. Gosh, what a baby. Gosh, John Boy, you're so mean. <laughs> wow. Wow, you two. I mean, you almost seem like you're getting worse, man. You guys are friends. You're family members, you know? All right, everybody. Be safe out there.